Hello from CES 2019. We are very excited to have Dr. David White from Philips. His main area of expertise uh, is uh, sleep, and uh, Philips is making big strides in that in this, this uh, fairly emerging area that's uh, really needed for population in general. And there is a there is a feeling that there is a big market out there to improve sleep. Uh, please tell us more what's going on at, at Philips. Well, I mean, Philips believes that sleep is a really a fundamental component of health, and there, probably almost half the population is either not getting enough sleep or has a sleep disorder of some sort or another. So we're trying to address this. What's fundamentally new at Philips is that we are expanding our portfolio of options to, in the consumer space to both determine what somebody's sleep problem is and to provide them with remedies such that they can sleep better. And we're hoping to get it to where we can address three quarters or 80% of people with a sleep problem from a digital point of view in a consumer manner. Uh, and uh, tell us about your devices uh, in the sleep area okay. and as well as uh, digital technology. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll start with what, what we presented here last year, which is the what we now call the Smart Sleep Deep Sleep Headband. That's a device that is generally aimed at people that are not getting enough sleep, sleeping five, six, six and a half hours per night. It enhances slow waves. Slow waves are a very important cognitive phenomenon in terms of it's, it's the most restorative stage of sleep. And so if we can enhance that, people that are not getting enough sleep have improved cognitive function, and we have documented that. And that is still maturing. We have now got what we call the Smart Sleep Analyzer. And this is a, basically a questionnaire device that people can go into digitally and it asks them a series of, in, of you know, algorithm-driven questions that can identify exactly what their problem is. And we have about six or seven different domains of sleep problems that we can identify with this questionnaire. And in most of them, not all right now, but in most of them we have something we can offer them in terms of therapy for them. So we can say, this is your problem, here's what we would suggest you use. And so for instance, if you're not getting enough sleep, we Tell, we would tell them to sleep more and maybe use the the uh, smart sleep, deep sleep headband. If they've got snoring, we would take them to a device I'll talk about in a minute and th things like that. Yeah. If they've got, we also are bringing out this thing called the smart sleep uh, snoring device. And what it is, it's a band that goes around your chest. It's got a very clever algorithm with a device that using vibration will detect that you're on your back and get you off your back. And the so it detects position or it detects snoring? It detects position. Okay. okay. And so if it does not matter snoring at this time. So if you are snoring and, and it will vibrate and get you off your back, but it's a lot more complicated than that. It basically can deter determine exactly what vibratory sensation it takes to get you on your back. It does this when you're actually already moving to get onto your back such that it doesn't have to wake you up fundamentally. So it, it does not, and we've documented this very carefully, it does not disrupt sleep and it will keep you on your side at least 95% of the night. So it's very effective in doing that. That does not solve everybody with snoring's problems, but it solves a lot of people's problems in terms of keeping them on their side. So we have that. In the insomnia space, we have teamed up with an organization called Sleep Rate out of Israel that have a what's called cognitive behavioral therapy device for, for program for people that have difficulty falling and or staying asleep. If, if our analyzer detects that your problem is falling and staying asleep, it will then direct you into this and it gives you very personalized guidance around a lot of behaviors that are important in terms of improving your sleep. And the number one way to treat difficulty falling and staying to sleep by anybody's recommendation is cognitive behavioral therapy. We have a full-time cognitive psychologist that's worked with this where it individualizes for you. It can take data off virtually any wearable, incorporate that information into the program because then it'll know exactly how much time you're spending in bed, how well you're sleeping and whatnot. And so it will, uh, it, it will address that. So it's a it's a online uh, service. Yes, it's an online service that yeah that you can use. It, it will go. You can, you can for 129 dollars. You can do it. You can do it for up a, up to a year. But it usually takes somewhere between about four and 12 weeks to solve the problem with the insomnia. And the treatments are of several varieties. One is what's called sleep restriction. It reduces the amount of time you're spending in bed, such as the wake time is reduced. It has relaxation methodologies. It deals with what's called stimulus control, which basically has you not spend a lot of wake time in bed. It's a, it's a very complete program. And it's again, it's the best thing that you can do for, for that particular problem. 
we also now, we had last year, we also have now th this, what's called Somnio, or the Smart Sleep Somnio, which is a wake-up light that basically can wake you up in any manner that you desire in terms of sounds and you know sunrise simulations. It also will measure all the variables in the room, such as temperature, humidity, light, noise, and give you feedback about those. It has a method for pacing breathing, you know, pace where it slows your breathing down to six or eight breaths per minute, which is very innately activates the parasympathetic nervous system and reduces the sympathetic which is what helps you fall asleep so that can be done with that light as well so it, it serves a number of functions so those are the main uh consumer products that we have that we're bringing out i mean so the three new ones are the analyzer the sleep well the one for falling and staying asleep and the snoring band um, are you happy with re consumer response to sleep band uh, the reason i'm asking is because sleep band has uh, this very elegant and very clinically documented neurophysiology behind it. Yes. And, uh, you know, all these ideas are very difficult from what, what I see is to, to translate into consumer understanding of technology behind it. And uh, I think from consumer standpoint, they just look at this as just another gadget, but as a clinician, I can see that it has this very interesting, you know, physiology behind it. Are you happy about consumer response? Well, what, what we have, it was released a little bit later than we had hoped it would be in 2018 because we were doing what we call these ambassador programs where we were getting a bunch of people, hundreds of people to be using it and to give us a lot of feedback about it. And the people that do use it are, vast majority of them are extremely satisfied in terms of feeling you know, more energetic, less sleepy during the day. Frequently they'll tell us I wake up about a half hour earlier and I feel t completely rested. And so from that point of view, if people buy it, they are happy with it. And we're, so we're, we're quite satisfied with that point of view. You're asking me a question which I don't really know the answer to is are we attracting in enough people for a device that's biologically maybe somewhat complicated that they cannot grasp exactly what it does. And that'll have to be, and we're working on this, We've, this is one of the reasons we didn't release it sooner. Our messaging around that we decided was not ideal when we first brought it out. And we are correcting that to deal with the very issue that you're talking about was the fact that, you know, concept of a slow EEG wave is not standard lingo right. for, a, for a consumer. Right. But it's making progress. Yeah. And plus, uh, the other area is that sleep is underestimated by so many, you know, by so many people. You know, it's, a, it's literally we have epidemic of sleep problems, of, of sleep problem, you know, uh, all, all different, you know, aspects of it. And, uh, you know, it's a very difficult area, I think, to to operate, but you know, uh, like with a lot of medical problems, it takes years for consumers to realize and to move and start control, uh, you know, controlling these problems. I agree. That there are, I mean, the number of people with sleep problems is, is undoubtedly huge. Some are self-inflicted and some are right. biological. A lot of medical problems are <laughs> self-inflicted, actually. I agree. I agree. Um, that's sort of why we're doing what we're doing, because we feel like that there, if we can make it easy for people, and that's the thing, if we can make it very easy for people to determine what their sleep problem is and give them a remedy that is that is satisfactory, that's not difficult, is not too, you know, not too slow in working, that these things work pretty fast and they can detect that it's working, we think we can treat a lot more people. Right now, the people are not going to their doctors and telling them about sleep problems. Right. And they, don't, they just don't seem to want to do that. And if we can make the whole thing seamless, the web, whatnot, and if they need a doctor, we're, we're, we're working with a, we'll announce it on a couple of days, we've got a relationship with a telemedicine organization that we will be able to bring doctors into the equation if they're needed and if the individual would like that. So hopefully ease and efficacy will make, will allow us to treat more people with sleep disorders than is currently the case. All right, thank you very much. And plus, uh, there is a lot of buzz around CES now about 5G, uh, which is a Verizon uh, at and in the United States efforts to move uh, uh, speed. You know, speed and uh, allows you know smaller devices, basically what they call the Internet of Things, to interact. And uh, maybe uh, uh, there will be, in the future, devices. Seems like Philips will be there on the yep. front lines to develop and to implement devices that can actually monitor and continuously be plugged into, uh, you know, data stream to, to monitor uh, 
during the sleep. Yeah, we, we want to do it. The smart sleep device, it's, it's full EEG. Right. So it's giving you the gold standard in terms of sleep. Obviously, there are wearables that try to get at the same information by different methodologies. But I agree with you. It's going to get to where everybody's going to be monitored. People will probably have the bad quality of their sleep in their face on a regular basis. And if they believe it, and, that, and, and that's, I think that's what's different about Philips primarily is we're trying to treat them. We're not trying to just identify them. Right. You know, and if we can have solutions and ways to firmly de determine if that's the right solution, then we're a step ahead of just monitoring. Right. You have expertise, clinical expertise. Yes, as well. we do. We have a lot of it. Thank you so much. Good luck. Thank you. Enjoy chatting with you.